making sure we are live. Awesome. So, um, good afternoon, everyone, Shift Success community. I hope you're doing very well on this glorious, glorious day and staying safe, of course. Um, today, we are joined by uh, a phenomenal cohort member who's only been with us since um, October, end of October 2019 from Shift Success Cohort 4. Uh, she's going to be speaking about her journey. Uh, it's a bit different, this one as well, because um, Jane has actually retired from the police force Um and, you know, she's on a different journey now in her life and she's going to be sharing her, you know, her wins, her challenges, and also hopefully going to give you lots and lots of inspiration going forward. So without any further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jane Bramble. Jane, how are you? I'm very well. Hey, everybody. Hope everybody's safe. Nice to see you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Time to say, Jane. We got there in the end. We were having a battle behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. with Zoom, wasn't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Gee, so, Jane. I can't bear it. <laughs> So Jane, and um, welcome to to the Facebook Live. Um, this is the series we've been doing due to the COVID that's that's around us to give inspiration to those in the community. And what I like to start off by asking is, um, you know, tell us a bit about yourself. What force are you from? Um, what roles did you have in the force? Kind of when did you join the force? Okay, so um, I'm from the Met, as many of you know, um, and I joined way, way back in 1989, which is probably before you were born, I would suggest. 1989, is that, is that what you said? Yes. yes I, I was born in 1990, so yes. Oh my yes. God, oh my God. <laughs> um, and quite, you know, it was a different sort of world back then. Um, and I've got to say, I have thoroughly enjoyed my 30 years. There's been a few bits and pieces that were pretty rubbish, but... Um, I was one of the lucky ones. I escaped unscathed. I had a good, mainly a good career. I really enjoyed all the posts that I did. Um, I started off at a very busy borough in Stoke Newington, which is um, quite a busy inner city. It still is a very, very busy, multicultural inner city borough. Lots and lots of things to do. Um, great grounding, um, had a really great sort of probation. Um, got my probation out of the way, took a year out and went traveling around um, Australia. So I took a year out of the police and went traveling around Australia. That was really, really exciting, really great, loved it. Um, came back and um, spent a few more years on the beat and then I joined the TSG. So um, in the Met, that's the Territorial Support Group. I don't know what the counties call it, but Territorial Support Group, uh, the right squad for want of a better expression. Uh, had a great time, um, was in things like the poll tax riots, the student demonstrations, um, Oh God, you name it, I've done it. I've been right in the middle of it all, mainly having sort of bricks and bottles and all the rest of it thrown at me, but thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. Um, so I did that for a number of years. Um, and then from there, I went to do uh, riot training. So we've got a site down in Milton, which is down in Kent, sort of Gravesend area. Um, so spent quite a bit of time doing that. Um, so I spent you know, about five years of my career as a PC um, instructing um, people um, with right techniques and tactics. I uh, was lucky enough to have a stint, uh, got invited to go to China. Um, so spent uh, some time out in China to um, teach the Chinese police um, our tactics. Uh, that was a very, very exciting trip, as I'm sure you can imagine. Not so much at the moment, but <laughs> back then it was great. Um, yeah, that was very, very exciting. And then from um, public order training, I got promoted. To the rank of sergeant, um, brilliant rank, best rank in the in the job, if you ask me. I loved it because you get to um, have a little bit of say so in what happens. You get to really shape people's careers. You get, you know, if you see wrongdoing, you can do something about it. Um, you know, you can influence people, and that's what I loved about it. You know, you can really sort of like have a bit of bit of an influence on people's lives. Um, so um, in the rank of sergeant, I did things like recruit training. Um, so again, got to get recruits from the very, very sort of like the raw basics and shape and model them into um, police officers. I like to think decent police officers. Um, and then I basically finished my career um, in custody. Absolutely loved custody. Again, kind of, you know, frontline, sharp, sharp end of policing. Not the most glamorous of you know roles but I thoroughly enjoyed it and again it's it's a place where you can influence people's lives you know you get this massive choice about whether you say somebody has get has get you know gets their liberty or not you can um you know I'm, I sort of had some very strange conversation with with prisoners at bizarre times of the day and night about their drug habits and 
you know, tried to sort of influence people into sort of better ways of life. You know, whether that worked or not, I don't know, but that's what I loved about custody. Um, and I, I was lucky enough to retire back in January. Um, and I've got to say, this is not quite how I imagined my retirement to go. Um, but I've got to say, I've been making good use of my time. You have. You absolutely have. Yes, yeah, I have. Amazing. I have. I'm trying. I, what, my aim is at the end of the COVID outbreak, I want to come away with a qualification. So that's yeah. what I'm doing. So Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, so why did you join the police in the first time? Was that just, you know, have you got police in the family or was it just a bit no. of a... It was a conversation. I'd always, I'd always wanted to join the police ever, ever since I was sort of a young kid, really. Um, I used to commute into the city of London. Um, and actually, bizarrely enough, I used to commute with my dad. My dad and I used to get on the train in the mornings and travel in together. And um, I think it was one day I was so fed up with office life because it was so boring and dull and monotonous and repetitive. I was virtually in tears one morning and I said to my dad, I, can't, I don't know how much more of this I can bear. And it was my dad. My dad said to me, um, well, you've always wanted to join the police. Why don't you do that? And I thought it was a bit of a light bulb moment, you know, and I thought, actually, he's got a point. And never really looked back, to be honest with you. So at the ripe old age of 20, which is quite a few years ago now, <laughs> um, I joined up. And as I say, my career more or less was pretty happy. Uh, there's a few years that I won't go into now that I can think of that weren't particularly great. But on the whole, actually, over a 30 year period, it was it was pretty good. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome stuff. Um, so we've got Vicky Sharp watching. We've got Samantha Poole. We've got Reese watching as well. They're saying hello. Um, and, <laughs> and guys, if uh, you know, drop us some likes, some uh, love hearts. And also if you are watching back on replay, type in replay. Um, great, Jane. So why, you know, you, you knew you was coming up to retirement. Yes. And why, why did you start thinking about business? Because, you know, you, you, join shift success before yeah. you were hired but why business why didn't you think you know i'm just going to get another job or go back to the police oh god no um i always i always said that i wouldn't go back to the police um just because that's that's part of my life is over and you know the retirement thing is is my is my future um i don't know um I guess throughout my career, um, I've had a number of friends and colleagues have sort of said to me, you know, can you help me with weight management? Can you help me with fitness tests? In fact, one mate of mine, you always knew when the fitness test was coming around because she always used to get back in touch with me. <laughs> and I thought to myself, actually, I'm only 50, well, I'm 51 now, but I thought, actually, I'm quite young in the grand scheme of things. I'm not ready to get out of my rocking chair and my knitting just yet. And I wanted something to get my teeth into. And... Um, one of the superstars from cohort one and actually a personal friend of mine um we were having a conversation a rather i think it was rather a, an alcohol fueled conversation about a year or so around about sort of june-ish last year um and obviously she was telling me all about her journey i'd obviously heard her mention you before and the whole shift success thing and um she said well why don't you just kind of go give it a go and i thought well i've got nothing to lose you know i'll, I'll go to the quick start day got nothing to lose um, see what they've got to offer because I thought I rather than just getting another job I wanted something that was going to be my own little baby and I thought you know over all these years people have sort of kept sort of saying to me about this you know can you give me some help with weight management can you give me help with like fitness etc and I've always been absolutely anybody who knows me will know that I am absolutely crazy on my fitness it's an obsession I would I would go that far it's an obsession if you speak to my other half she'd probably tell you yeah, Jane's obsessed, and I, and I am. And I thought, actually, it'd be nice to kind of get a bit, reap a bit of reward for that, rather than kind of, you know, I've got years of experience of all sorts of things, you know, triathlons and marathons and all sorts of crazy um, obstacle races and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and I thought, actually, I think I can market that into something tangible. Yep. So as I say, after the rather sort of alcohol fueled conversation that I had with the, uh, a superstar from cohort one and we know who i'm talking about um yeah it, uh, it, that was that was the start of my shift success journey and, and after the quick start day it was like it, it it and i'm not just i'm not people probably think i'm just saying this and i'm not just saying it i was absolutely blown away yourself all the other mentors and at the end of the day it was a bit of a no-brainer for me and i thought i've got nothing to lose by signing up um i've got everything to gain and I have not been disappointed. Oh, really. Amazing. That's, that's very kind words. And you know, yeah. I just about to touch on that. You are an 
athlete. You are an actual beast. You do <laughs> marathons. You are literally one of the fittest people I have ever met. Um, and it's phenomenal. You continue to do it. It's, you know, it's, it's an inspiration in, in that in itself. Um, so if I was to meet you, you know, recently I've said if I was to meet people in the bar, right? But for you, yeah. if I was to bump into you in the gym and I was to say, oh, you know, what do you do? How would you introduce yourself to me? I would say, hi, Alex. Uh, my name's Jane. I'm the founder of Club Body Confidence, fitness for generation ageless. And you'd probably be scratching your head going, what in the hell, what is she talking about? Well, what we do, we're a fitness-based company. Uh, we help ladies who are normally quite intimidated by gyms. And we help them feel amazing and full of life. Um, and it, all we do is we show them simple techniques simple manageable solutions um, to build training into their daily lives so they can be part of Generation Ageless. Amazing. And that is it, we, there's no secret to it. And I'm, as you can see, I'm very passionate about it. And I kind of get a bit frustrated when I think that other people can't see that, do you know what I mean? Because there's no great secret to fitness at all. You don't have to be part of an intimidating gym, not to mention an expensive gym. <laughs> um, it's building it into a daily life, into sort of like bite-sized manageable pieces is what I believe in. Amazing. Fantastic. Talk to me about the name um, Club Body Confidence, because I think that's a phenomenal business name. Um, you know, how did that come about? And, you know, talk to me, you know, kind of the, you know, why is it named that? Um, so um, it, it really is, the heart of it is to make women feel confident in themselves. Um, so, you know, I'm very much, I like um, sort of group training. I get the most, when I'm training in a group, um, I really kind of get the most out of my training. Um, so I wanted it to have a sort of a club feel to the, to, to the, to the company. Um, and it basically spells out what I think I can give ladies. They can feel confident, you know, you know we're not looking at making people like, you know, um, you know a six pack or a you know you're not going to be winning any sort of competition well you might do I don't know but you might not looking at winning any comp competitions it's it's all about you know you put on that sort of slinky dress to go out in well not so much at the moment <laughs> but you put that you know you put on that nice um outfit that you've just purchased and you think yes I look amazing and then you know your partner or your friends and say bloody hell what have you been doing you know, you look absolutely sassy, you look sexy, you feel amazing, you feel foxy, and you're getting that kind of, it's the feeling that it gives you, I think. Amazing, amazing. So, so, that's almost... the name, sorry to interrupt. so that's where the name came about. And obviously with massive help from Sapna, who's an amazing, amazing branding guru. Yeah. I can't big up Sapna enough. She is my <laughs> brand. She, she is my brand guru. So it was actually her that came up with that name. So, um, yeah. And I think it was an, it's like a stroke of genius, really. So, yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff. So what you're saying, basically, is that you're helping um, women with not only feeling, you know, good on the outside and sexy and having high self-esteem, but it's actually making them feel, you know, internally, you know, confident, yeah. empowered, um, yeah. inspired by that physical kind of attributes that you give them, right? Absolutely, yeah. Making them feel ageless. Amazing. You know, making them, you know, if they... So they sort of turn up to, I don't know, they, their son or their daughter's getting married and they think, yeah, I'm the mother of the bride or the groom, I look amazing. Or, you know, they've just got that extra bit of oomph so they can sort of run around with their children, their grandchildren, wherever it may be. Just the way it kind of makes them feel, you know, it's, it's, there's no real no secret to it at all. Amazing, so, yeah. amazing stuff. So who would you say, you know, you obviously women, but who, who would you say is your actual target customer? Is there someone in mind? Is it any woman or...? Yeah, so I've got, um, there's a, a customer sort of avatar, if you like. Um, it's somebody who's sort of mm, going through the menopause, post-menopausal, feeling a bit sluggish. Um, just somebody who's slightly overweight, doesn't want to go to the gym because gyms can be quite intimidating, doesn't want to, um, you know, it could, they could be quite expensive as well. Um, and it really is that sort of lady who just wants to, get everything moving again and lose some weight um, and not having to go down the route of things like, you know, surgery and all this kind of stuff or medication, all this, all this kind of nonsense. Um, it really is that, that sort of lady who's kind of menopausal, feeling sluggish, 
slightly overweight, um, doesn't know where to start, is confused by it all. Because let's face it, there's so much out there, isn't there, about meal plans and you know training plans and all this sort of stuff. Well, they don't need to worry about anything like that. You know, they can put themselves in my hands, and I will make them feel absolutely amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Okay, so um, what, what kind of um, problems do, you know, you mentioned kind of going through the menopause, maybe a lack of confidence they're feeling. Um, yeah. What other problems would your target customer, you know, go through? Would it be, you know, things like dating perhaps? Um, I think uh, a lot of them, and all the research that I've done, the big problems that come up are people, um, yeah, like you just said, haven't got the confidence to walk into a gym. Um Time is a big issue. Um, so time, people, you know, with all these kind of time saving devices that we've got in the world these days, actually we're finding at the moment, we've got even less time than we ever did. Um, so time was a big factor. So I, it was, you know, I was, that was a big problem I thought for people was, was, was the time factor, confidence. Um, yeah, and, and nature, you know, when, when, we sort of like a uh, lady's kind of nature sort of takes its toll on them. Um, so yeah, they were the sort of like the big sort of problems that I came across. Fantastic. Okay. And how do you solve those problems for your customer? Is it, you know, do they, you know, do you, they see you? Is it online? Um, do you do um, like a weekly checkup thing? How does that look like? Yeah. So um, my plan before COVID started, my, my plan was um, it was going to be a face-to-face -face thing. Cause I'm very much, um, technology, anyone who knows me knows that technology ain't my thing. <laughs> and I'm very much, um, I like face to face. I like to see people. Um, so yeah, it was going to be, um, I'm in the sort of process of designing products at the moment. Um, and it was going to be face to face, you know, a course of um, training sessions. So an initial consultation to find out what the problems are, maybe take a few measurements, um, find out, you know, if, what sort of they actually do at the moment um, and then offer them various packages. So I'm in the process of designing those packages and a pricing structure at the moment. Um, so yeah, it was just gonna be a face-to-face -face thing. And I think when this is all finished, I think we'll go back to being a face-to-face -face thing because I think with training, it's I can do it over Zoom or I could do it over FaceTime, but I think I would get, and I think my customer would get a lot more out of it face-to-face um, -face. and also, I find with my customer base, we're not very te no, technology based anyway. So I think face to face is is the way forward. I think when obviously when all this finishes. Yeah, amazing stuff. And um, before obviously COVID, um, I mean, just for, for everyone, you have been in the force for you know all those years. You've re you've retired. It's safe to say you've never had any business experience prior to none. none. And already you've you've made sales prior to you know COVID, mm -hmm. and I know you're adjusting things now, but. For those who are listening, who, who've been, you know, institutionalized by the job, who may feel undervalued and they may feel like, you know, I'm, I'm a cop, I'll always be a cop, there's nothing else I can do out there. They may be getting rejection from other um, jobs out there and not getting the jobs they want. And they're thinking about going into business, but they've just got a bit of a nervy feeling. Can you just explain, you know, how did that first sale feel for you? Oh, it's amazing because you actually realize that people are willing to part with their hard earned cash for your knowledge, your experience and your services. And since we've been in lockdown, actually I've been, I've been contacted by another couple of officers that I used to work with because they knew that when I was retiring, they knew that I was going to be going in and doing this kind of business. Um, so they've contacted me and they're kind of wanting to know what kind of, you know, um, packages they, they are available to them so it's that feeling of um ah oh, how do you how do you put that into words it's just I think in the police you it's a very negative environment and then you come into something like shift success where everybody not just the mentors but all the other cohort members members all celebrate your wins and actually you just think well actually no I am, I am worth something and all this knowledge and experience is is worth something so I know uh, before COVID started, a couple of old school friends, bizarrely enough, contacted me and said, oh, you know, we, we've one had a son getting married and the other one had a daughter getting married. And they said, we need, we want to look the best mother there. We want to look better than the mother of the groom or the mother, mother of the bride. And I said, oh, well, I can help you with that. And they said, well, we're happy to pay you. And I was like, what? 
oh, okay. And it's, it's weird to begin with, but you soon get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing yeah. stuff. We've got um, Jamie Stentooth tuned in now. We've got Lorna as well. She's saying hello. Hi, everybody. Um, nice that, to see you. That is, um, that's awesome. And it is, it's, you know, almost a euphoric feeling. I think everyone remembers yeah. the first. I know we can have a laugh about that, but everyone remembers their first sale as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. With regards to, you know, the fitness industry, what makes you different, Jamie? You know, I know you on a personal level now, and, and I think you've got this infectious personality, but what makes you different from any other PT out there or any other you know, fitness um, advisor out there? What, what separates you? Okay, so um, I know it's a very flooded market. I know that. Um, I think what separates me is um, just the fact that I'm a little bit of an older female. Mm -hmm. um, nothing against any of the other PTs that are out there. I respect them all. They've all, you know, they've all got their own kind of thing about them. Um, most of the time you'll find it's a guy and if you are a female of a certain age, do you really want to be trained by a guy when do you really want to be explaining certain sort of bodily functions to a bloke? Probably not. Hmm. Um, another thing I found was if the PTs were female, they tended to be sort of young Instagram Love Island types. And again, <laughs> nothing against them. Uh, I wish I looked like that, but I don't. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's what separates me is the fact, first of all, I'm female. Secondly, I'm a little bit older. And thirdly, I think with all my police background and my, you know, um, training police officers, I think I'm, uh, some would say I'm probably a bit too strict. Uh, certain. I like the word certain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably a better use of the word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. So, so, so yeah. for example, if I was a client of yours and I was, and I was a female, and you know, um, it was check in or something. You was you was checking on my progress, and I'd been eating crap, for example. Yeah, oh yeah, you'd be <laughs> in for. <laughs> like, okay, I was gonna say, so I would get bollocking off you, saying, "Look, come on, you know what's happening." Yeah. Uh, but the, you, the, I know we're laughing about it, but at the end of the day, do you want a result or don't you? You know, I can sort of pay you lip service and say, "Oh well, never mind," and blah blah blah. But you know, you've come to me for a reason you want to look amazing, you want to feel amazing, and we can get you there, but you're not going to get there if you are eating crap or drinking too much and the rest of it. So amazing. Yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff. And I completely agree. Um, <laughs> so, I with, <laughs> with regards to, um, you know, some challenges, I mean, we're kind of bringing on people on to this, this, the actual Facebook community group. We have a separate cohort group for those who are watching. Um, but for this big community group, there's loads of police officers from all around the country in this group. And, um, you know, it's all well being saying, you know, we're having a laugh in business, we're enjoying ourselves in business, but business is hard work as well. And I know you've just started oh. your journey, but what's kind of been a challenge for you so far? Um, technology, <laughs> again, anyone <laughs> knows me, technology is always a challenge for me. Um, I'm not of the generation where um, we, you know, we, I was never brought up on computers. Um, I used to avoid them at all costs if I could. Um, so that's been a massive challenge. Um, and like you mentioned earlier, you know, I think 30 years in the police, you do get institutionalized. I've got no experience about business. Um, things like, you know, marketing and pricing plans and all this kind of stuff. It's an absolute mystery. But what I would say is what I've found since I've been to shift success. If you've got a question, all you do, put your hand up and you ask somebody and there's somebody there that answers that question for you. It's absolutely amazing. And as I say, not just the mentors as well, but you've got this whole kind of family of cohorts that are um, there to support you. Um, and you put a question on the cohort group and within 15 minutes, somebody's there answering it for you. So um, I would say in answer to your question, I would say technology is my biggest mm. challenge. Um, but there's lots, like you've just mentioned, you know, it's the, it is a big challenge in business, isn't it? And, um, yeah. but I would say, um, you know, being part of the cohort community, those challenges are manageable. Whereas if I was sat there on my own trying to figure all this out, I probably would give up if I'm mm. honest with you. Okay. Awesome. That's nice. Very honest. Um, so what are some of the mindset different, sorry, in fact, what are some of the skill sets, you know, you've been a cop for, you know, many, many years, you retired, mm -hmm. amazing. What are some of the skill sets that you, as a police officer, all this value you have that you've actually transferred into the business world? What, what some would you say? Uh, skill sets, I would say, um, I, 
as a supervisor, um, I had to manage quite a few people, uh, quite a few personalities, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's one of the skills that I've brought over to the business world. So I feel as if um, I'm doing a group training session, I'm quite good at managing a group. Um, I'm, I'm only five foot four, but I've got a gob on me, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think I'm quite assertive. And I think that's something else that I've, because I've had to be. I yeah. think as a female in the police and certainly some of the roles that I've done looking looking back on my career I think actually if you don't stand up for yourself you kind of fade into the background and I'm not a wallflower at all um, and I think that is definitely one of the things one of the skill sets that I've brought over is is I'm quite good at managing groups I'm quite assertive um, you know and if like you said earlier if, if somebody tries to sort of like lie to me and say oh I've been you know eating really well except my weight's been creeping up and up i know that and i don't really like liars so um you can smell bullshit basically as well yeah yeah well, yeah 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 but i think that is definitely i would say a police officer's skill you know when you you know when somebody's telling you a pack of lies yeah amazing 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 stuff um what's one of the mindset differences that you've experienced you know from from being a cop for so long to to now being you know the captain of your own destiny ha, what what differences have you noticed in your thinking um yeah so um definitely definitely a mindset change i would say i'm trying to get my head around is the fact that everybody is just so positive mm -hmm. um so i'm used to sort of 30 years in the police and people do tell you porky pies you know people I don't know, can be, you know, try and have, have you over. Um, so one of the mindset differences I'm trying to get my head around is when somebody is almost like nice to you, it's like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm not used to that. <laughs> um, and when somebody's positive and genuinely trying to help you, yeah, sometimes you think, uh, why are they doing that? Are they, oh no, hang on a minute, I'm not in the police anymore. <laughs> People actually want to help you. Um, so that's something I'm finding it, it's, it's a nice feeling because I'm getting used to it and it's, it is a nice feeling, but yeah, it, it, it's a very strange feeling to begin with because you think actually, no, people actually want me to do well. Mm. Um, and people are actually out there to help me rather than, you know, in the police, I think people just stab you in the back as soon as you turn your back. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, you yeah like, do, you, do you feel like the police, you're in almost like a bubble, like to the outside yeah. world? Definitely. And you kind of get into this mindset. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. Um, you know, that's all I'm good for. That's all I can do. What What am I going to do when I leave the police? But actually, since I've been out of the police, I think, crikey, there's an absolute world of stuff out here that you, you find you, as a police or an ex-police officer, your head and shoulders above a lot of Joe Public just, just, just because of the way that you've had to be in the police you almost take it for granted. And, and because of this negative feeling that you've got in the police, um, you are almost made to feel as if, you know, well, if you leave, what, what are you going to do? You can't do anything. That's all you're good for is being a police officer. But yeah, you've got all of these transferable skills that members of the public just haven't got. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I, always, I always think it's strange because as a police officer, we've got all these skills and yet we don't talk about it and we don't, sh we don't big ourselves up. And yet, you know, you get a lot of people in sort of private industry who do big themselves up but haven't got the skill set completely agree it's, yeah it's, it's a strange kind of thing mm. isn't it I, I found so yeah amazing amazing stuff what you mentioned there is key you know when you're actually out of a different environment whether there's a police or you know a job in general um you've got something called um a ras that's a romeo alpha sierra and it's called ras you know reticulating activating system so if i was going to say to you um you know um look for yellow cars or in fact you might have got your own car one day and then all of a sudden you're seeing your car on the road everywhere else right it's because you're focusing on that car you know you've got the car so as soon as you spot the same car you're going to see it and sometimes when you're outside of a different environment when you are focused on opportunity you're going to find opportunity and when you're focused on people helping you you're going to focus on that and the flip side though is if you're in the environment like the police or in a corporate job or it could be a family home if you're focused on negativity that's mm. what you're going to get in your life um so it's, yeah it's a key difference you've just said there that you know once you found that you left the police all of a sudden you know it was positive and opportunities yeah. everywhere. so Definitely. Definitely, yeah, yeah awesome stuff yeah. um 
you know, as a result of, you know, where you are right now in business and, you know, your, your journey that you're on with just success, you know, what do you feel about like your future, you know, cause there's no, there's no end. There's almost no retirement. Well, there is no retirement. There's no, like you, you get to decide when you finish your business, you know, you could go on, you know, for a hunt to a hundred, right. But how does that future feel for you now? You know, how does that look for you? Really exciting, really, really exciting. Um, I think once lockdown finishes and all this kind of hopefully is a distant memory, because as we know, it's not going to last. Um, I'm, I am really excited. I feel as if I'm kind of in a, I feel as, as if I'm a greyhound in a trap. And when the traps come up, I'm going to go. That's how I feel. Um, you know, because I'm just, get, I'm halfway through getting qualified. So I'm qualified in the first part of my um, personal training course. And my the second part of it is, is going on as we speak. Um, so I'm just sort of hopefully going to be qualified in the next few weeks for that. You know, I've got my T-shirts all printed up, business cards all printed up. Um, you know, I've got customers kind of waiting, as it were. Yeah. Um, and I'm building you know, products, sorting out a pricing structure, et cetera. So I feel excited because I can't wait for the restrictions to be lifted and I'm going to be like this greyhound out of a trap. That's that's kind of how I feel. And I like to say, you know, I, I'm not just saying it. It's, it is all down to shift success because um, anyone who's thinking about joining, you know, you've got this whole kind of support system in place um, and you feel as if, you know, anything is achievable. And all you've got to do is ask. If you get stuck, you put your hand up and you ask and no question is a stupid question. And I uh, believe me, I've asked some few howlers in my time. <laughs> but, no, the thing is, but nobody laughs. No one says, oh, you've been stupid. Everyone says, no, well, this is, you know, we've all been there. This is what I did. And this is the problems I encountered or this is, you know, this is what I did when I was in your situation. And there's always somebody there to help. That's, mm. you know, that's the massive thing about it. It's true, you know, sometimes it's quite, you know, we look at these some successful people in business or, you know, we look at someone even with a great physique and they've got abs and they've got, you know, just a, just a great physique. But we sometimes forget that those successful individuals were once unsuccessful and mm. those people with great physiques were, you know, they didn't have great physiques one day. So we've all been on this journey and you're right, you know, we, there is no such thing as a silly question, you know, it's, um, we'd rather know the answers right away so you can push yeah, forward. Of course. Um, What's been some of your, um, and it's great to hear that you are planning, you're prepping for when the doors do open. I love that analogy. Of great like great to go. Yeah, really, really, really good stuff. <laughs> um, what's been one of your entrepreneurial highlights so far? I know you've only just started in the end of October. What, what's the one thing that's standing out for you that you thought, oh, this is good? Um, I think it's when people start recognizing actually all this skill base that you've got and all your knowledge is worth something. So, um, yeah, so... I've been invited to um, do a regular slot on a uh, Facebook group um, that are uh, that specialise in women 40 plus. Um, so they want me to do like a regular fitness slot for them. Wow. Uh, say a couple of ex-colleagues, um, you know, when you get that text message, um, you know, an, ex, an ex-colleague contacted me about mm, two or three weeks ago. She said, I know you've left. Uh, she said, I used to really like you as a skipper. She said, and I know you're sort of starting up your own uh, fitness company she said will you train me she's got um I think she's got a birthday like a major birthday coming up and she said I want to feel amazing for that and I said right okay and you just think it puts you on it those are the things that stand out for me um it's when people say all right Jane I know you're into your training um and I'm interested in what you've got to say and I know you've got knowledge and experience so you know come and share it with everybody and that that to me is just priceless Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, so where do you see your vision, your your vision of where you want to take your company? What does that vision look like? Um, so you know Joe Wicks? Yes. Move aside. <laughs> Love it, yes. This is coming. Joe Wicks is coming. <laughs> so I really admire, um, I've studied a lot, the likes of Joe Wicks, um, James Smith, et cetera, et cetera. And I've studied a lot of those and I've had a look at those guys and I'm thinking, Move aside, boys. Jane's on her way. Love it. And, I, and I know it sounds, it's a bit pie in the sky, but you, you know, I, that is, that would be amazing. I love it. it. Would, yeah. If, if, you know, the next, jo, the next Joe Wicks. <laughs> I, I love that. That's amazing. That's uh, good. That's, you know, it's much more fun to think big than to small. So I love that thinking. Very big thing. I love yeah, it. Yeah. 
I have every you get there as well. Every doubt, I every hope, day, I hope so. <laughs> you'll you'll smash it. I know you will. Um, so Jane, how do people get in touch with you? How do people you've got a Facebook group yourself? Um, and you know, do you want to tell us more about that Facebook group so you know your potential customers can join? Yeah, okay. So it's Club Body Confidence, that's a Facebook group. Um, I've got an email address as well, Jane at clubbodyconfidence.com. Uh, and of course, you can direct message me um, any any time if you want to. Um, yeah, we're a growing little army on my Facebook page. Um, you know, I just all I do there is I share tips and advice about you know dieting um, or not dieting, but foods that you might want to consider eating, um, training plans, um, some killer workouts. I'm always a fan of the killer workout, as I'm sure you probably uh, know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so as I say, join me on the Facebook page, email me or direct message me. Um, I will be building a, a web, website at some stage, but that's kind of a work in motion at the moment. So yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. So Jane, you are absolute inspiration to me, the team. Um, you know, <laughs> Thanks the, for having me on, Alex. I really appreciate it. The cohorts, you've, you've been an inspiration. Just say you've only just started in October. You've grabbed this business by the balls um and you know you've took off with it which is phenomenal and i know you're gonna have a very successful future down to your hard work um and and yeah if anyone's got any questions for jane going forward drop them in the comments below or any questions for me i'm all happy to answer and yeah do reach out to jane she's got a fantastic group building and um and yeah i'll look forward to uh seeing your journey flourish jane thanks ever so much for having me on alex stay safe right. everybody. yeah stay, stay safe, safe everyone take care thank you jane everybody cheers alex cheers bye-bye